So today we're going to do it a little bit different because we were meant to have a guest in and they couldn't make it. So that's fine. So we've literally planned a yearly roundup in the last 19 minutes on the way over here, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, we were like driving along, like <laughs> typing for our lives. Oh what has gone on? January. Oh my gosh, January feels like the longest. The year's flown. Yeah, but, but looking back at it, like all the things we've done, I'm like, January? Yeah. That was so long ago. It was. It, it's a year ago. A whole year. A <laughs> whole year. But... It's when we started growing your personal brand. Yeah. And it's when we started taking it seriously yeah. and almost put. It was it was the switch up, it was the change, wasn't it? Yeah. So I think that's when everything changed really. It was, that's when we said. So we we forgot we were filming yesterday, we were doing content, and I was like, we posted, we must have filmed podcast clips in 2022 yeah. in the December because we posted on the 31st of December 2022 because I was like we're going to go into that new year grow my personal brand and we can't even remember filming that I, you, the outfit you were and I was like when was that when was this like a white hoodie on the green wall a half finished plan that's added to and worked on for a decade will always outdo any plan that's perfect so called and done for a decade what like when did we do this like that's you not... like that editing <laughs> yeah honestly the editing the font everything I was like oh, no. yeah but that shows you though that when you start something you're always going to hate the first thing that you do mm. always Sam always no but yeah when we decided to start growing the personal brand do you remember when it was when we said we were going to start filming as much as we did? Do you know what? I genuinely can't. I just feel like it just happened. Like, it was... Yeah. Ju- we say it was January because I feel like that's when almost the posting started, even though you said you- we started in December. But... Yeah. I think it was just the switch up. Do you remember what the result was, though? Why? 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 Yeah. Why? So, when did we go to the EMC? That was January, I'm sure it was. No, it was, was it? before it was Christmas. It was like November, December. Oh my God, no, it was because it was, yeah, it was dead Christmas eh? Yeah, so we went to the EMC. Yeah. We bumped into James Sinclair. Yes. He was, so we didn't go to one seminar and we were like, we were knackered. We are like, we're not going to that seminar. We didn't understand what the woman was talking about. <laughs> it was me and did get, we looked at each other and we were like, should we yeah, go? Yeah, we went and yeah. sat in a cafe and got a bowl of <laughs> chips and sat there and we were eating these chips and a hot chocolate. And we were like, right, we paid 500 quid a ticket to be here. <laughs> and we're now eating a bowl of chips. And then, um, we just watched James Sinclair's speech mm. and he was actually in the cafe downstairs with the chips and he was there with his videographer and we were watching what they were doing mm. on YouTube and we were like, what are they doing? And he came over and he said, you need to start growing your personal brand. And we were like, right, but you need to, he was like, you need to document every single thing that you're doing mm. and you need to share it. And we were like, right, okay. that's what we're going to do. <laughs> okay. We're going to start yeah. documenting everything. And then we bumped back into him, didn't we? In um it was the first trade show. It was the first trade show. We're jumping ahead. I know but, we are. We'll come back. But, yeah. but we then re-jumped. We re-jumped. We bumped into him in the February. Mm. He recognised you, didn't he? Yeah. Across the cafe. Across the cafe. <laughs> so we were like, oh my God. We were networking at a trade show. He came over and he was like, what are you doing? And we were like, networking and documenting. And, and there was a camera on the table like, documenting it all. We're doing it. We're doing what you told us to. Like, <laughs> I know. But it's been like the best decision that we've made because if I look back now, the year prior, so the year of 2022, everything was grown behind the scenes. Mm, so I did all the outreach was completely organic. We didn't really get any referrals, but it still worked. It grew the company, but it didn't grow like me as a person in terms of like opportunities and stuff. But now I look back and I'm like, the people that we've met and things has just been mad. The opportunities, the doors that have opened, all from growing a personal brand has just been unreal. Yeah, uh-huh. so I've loved it. But what would you say has been like, because obviously you've been on the journey. What do you hmm. think has been some of the difficulties? The difficulties? Yeah. Oh, personal or together? Because like editing style, yeah. mental. I'm sorry, <laughs> but the fact that like I started out not even knowing what how to add text to a video. <laughs> like, I like that has been like a thing for me yeah. personally. But I think seeing your confidence grow, because when we started the videos we did, you were very like within your shell. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like the white background videos. <laughs> <laughs> they were awful. I cannot be the only person that speaks to myself. I will speak to myself in the car. My best ideas come to me when I'm driving along the road of an evening. There's no one else on the road and I'm literally speaking to myself. But it was very like, everyone has to leave the office. Yeah. Nobody else can be in here. Yeah. It's just me and Phoebe and we're going to put the camera on and we're going to, and it took us days to yeah. get it. But seeing that versus like what we did yesterday 
yeah. 40 short form videos in a day. Yeah. That was doing one in an afternoon and yeah. it took us hours. So yeah, like, I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. But I think the confidence is growing. Yeah. I think seeing you change is like massive. Yeah, I think that's what I say to the people when they say, oh, like, is, is it easy for you? Like, oh, you're just so comfortable on camera. And I think you don't understand when I first started doing this. I couldn't think of anything worse than speaking on camera. If you'd have said to me, I'd be sit there and talk, I'd have been like, no. I can't do it. <laughs> that was like a thing. Like, you start saying something and go, mm, no, no, I'm not doing it, no. no, no. I found the first video. I came into the office and I was like, right, I'm going to film and get ready with me. Why would I do that? Because I don't even get ready like a normal person. I wash my fringe in the sink. <laughs> <laughs> but I literally, I'd balance the, I balance the phone in the office and started trying to do my makeup. I was thinking. I remember I pulled my mascara out and I went, "Yeah, no," and she <laughs> stopped the literally. camera. I was like, yeah. "I'm not doing that." <laughs> Gave up within seconds. Just like, no, yeah. can't do it. Yeah, it has been difficult, but it's been worth it so I would anyone that's thinking about growing their personal brand do it mm -hmm. your first anything is going to be awful just like we said yesterday your first workout will be awful your first video will be awful your first podcast will be awful except ours wasn't because Zoe Trickle was the best person I've ever known in my life so um, but you can't make your 100th without making your first yeah 100% yeah so that was the best John yeah January John yeah back to the trade show Back to the trade show. Was that January? No. February. Feb. Okay, on. moving on to Feb. I feel like loads still happened in January, but we that was like I such a like, big thing. Yeah, I feel like if we went through every single thing now. We'd be here for we would, days. Yeah, you'd hate us. We like, would. We'd okay. be here for hours. So moving on to February and what we February. did. I'd say trade show first. Yeah. Okay. Which trade show was that? The That was the first one. The the Spring Fair. The Autumn Spring Fair. Yeah, and you say. Spring Fair. It's autumn Fair. Wait, spring fair the spring fair and then when it's autumn they do the autumn fair but in the oh. spring they do the spring fair <laughs> so not the same fair. You, i don't know i don't know i've never understood this i've never it's got that have i the spring fair <laughs> the spring fair yeah okay so we went to there i'm not gonna say it again because i'm really annoyed the NEC. Me. we went to the nec went to the nec in fab and that was our first ever in person networking finding clients mm. trade show type of event why did we do that um it's because eco chic were there yeah they invited us as yes. just uh come and meet us come and because we haven't seen them in ages yeah. like they're in london we're here do you know what i mean it's you can you know, see clients every yeah. day so it's just one of those where we thought let's go along yeah let's go and meet them and then i think it was the first day we walked in and i was like go and speak to people go and speak to people and i'll film yeah. you and then yeah yeah we just just as a background on mm. that as well, guys. So Eco Chic, when I launched the agency, I moved into the offices for Gym Law. Stock was held at customs. Didn't have any money to pay the rent because we'd invested everything into Gym Law. I decided, like, what am I going to do to pay these bills? It was, I'm going to monetize what I was good at. And by monetizing what I was good at, it was social media and marketing. Now, our first ever client that we got at the agency was Eco Chic in like the first two weeks of launching it. And we still got them today and they are just fantastic. Mm. Like the team, everything about the brand is just unreal. They're culture just everything about it so they yeah they'd invited us down and um, we went there to create some content for them as well mm, didn't we yeah. go network with them go for dinner with them <laughs> which was nice we went for a lovely indian and we phoebe for a lovely indian i'm not a phoebe only eats person. beige, <laughs> beige. Well, a few tomatoes i don't know but indian food we, i remember we were driving along and we were like oh yeah meet us at ak bars and i was like that's it what does that what Indian food no I can't do it it we was like, a really long day as well and we were both sitting in the car going Ugh. we're so tired we're so, so tired. tired and you ate salad and cucumber and bread <laughs> and garlic naan <laughs> I tried a bit of the spicy fish yeah it was but, the funniest thing yeah. but we went there and I remember walking in you were like sweet to people so I was like okay I had no idea mm. what I was doing when it came to this and I knew it was like old school marketing but we wanted to obviously right now we talk about everything in the new era but the best thing about being at the trade show was that there was no other agencies there there was no other marketers there so every business that we're speaking to they're interested in what we what we do and what we offer and what we did for our clients there So we ended up leaving that event with, I can't even remember the amount of business cards and numbers I had in my phone. So many. I remember yeah. as well. It was literally the first day. Yeah. It, I think it was. It was the first day where everyone was like almost fresh. Yeah. Everyone was like, 
who's this person coming yeah. in saying they can do all these different things? Like, who's this person who yeah. I'm buying into? Wow. And they were very, like, every single person was receptive to it. Yeah. There was no one that was like, mm, don't really want to speak yeah. to you. Do you know what I mean? Every, every single person, person was like, wow. Yeah. They were. And mm. the first person we spoke to. I was going to say this. Yeah, yeah. Literally, the first person we spoke to at that event was Eco Rascals, mm. which has been a client ever since ever since yeah yeah and they again are unbelievable like one of the most amazing brands i've ever worked with the founders are just kaylee chris just amazing and yeah so you just don't realize what opportunities can come with something when you just throw yourself in at the deep end not only that though we documented that as well we did was that our first youtube video do you know what it was it was like four minutes long (laughs) it was the shortest youtube video we've ever done but it's one of my favourites, it genuinely yeah. is, because it just shows like the reality of what we were doing and what yeah. we were getting up to. Yeah. yeah. So looking back to, to January, we started building a personal brand. Mm. February, we filmed our first YouTube. So you wouldn't have got me talking even with anyone in the room <laughs> in January. And then in February, you had me stood in a hall, walking through, going, give me your top tip for personal branding and networking in person. Come with me today to the NEC Spring Fair. Today, we're meeting our existing clients and we're also networking with some really exciting clients too. So come with me. I remember as well, it took us like the second day. But, oh, it was where you went out in the evening yeah. to meet up with a different client and uh, you were shattered I you was. honestly needed to go to bed you were so so tired <laughs> I woke up 9am fresh eyed I've written you a script <laughs> so I've got you a script and we're going to make this YouTube video work you are going to make it an actual YouTube yeah, video and you're like huh okay and then we just the next day we're like right we're going to find somewhere we're going to stand in this hall yeah. and we're going to make you stand there and I'm going to make you film and, and you're going to and we did it yeah, we filmed, we got it out. I was sweating. I was nervous. I was really sweating. <laughs> That's all <laughs> I can right. say about You're it. You high top on, so it's fine. <laughs> I did, I had a nervous rush. Um, but yeah, we got it out. So that was that was another thing that we did, wasn't it? Mm. Then what else did we do? Oh my gosh. We really, really threw ourselves in at the deep end here because we networked and we also launched the podcast. It was a busy month. Looking back at these months, what? I like, like, this just sums up my brain. No, everyone leave the office. I don't want to speak on camera. February, right, we're doing YouTube and I've started a podcast. <laughs> like, now you're speaking to a room of people really yeah. like, behind the scenes who are all listening and we're going to put it on YouTube. We're going to put it on YouTube yeah. and Spotify and everything. Yeah. So we then launched the podcast and first episode was with Zoe Treguel. Yes. Shout out to Zoe because she is unbelievable and everything that she's done is crazy but I'll never forget her walking in and me being nervous she walked into my podcast and I was like oh. uh, yep yeah, this is my first one yeah. <laughs> but she sat there and she made me feel so comfortable yeah to the point we meowed on camera about three times we were like meow meow <laughs> we don't really do that anymore I feel no, like we don't. no we we've don't done we've, we've grown from the from the nerves <laughs> but that was that was like a little nervous tech almost but yeah it made everything more comfortable I think Zoe was a really good first podcast yeah. guest because she was just so friendly every single type of business is the same and not everything you're gonna have to be able to you know no definitely and you find one pet and you know <laughs> you know <laughs> but they're like no we don't we don't know <laughs> you <laughs> where's what on a hot day? you know <laughs> you know <laughs> you know that's when I say that when I don't have a clue what I'm on about like oh shit what she just she was amazing yeah. and I think doing that first podcast it made me want to do more because mm. the conversation that we had was just unreal and then the opportunities off the back of that were fab but I think so many people said to me they're like oh what is the aim of the podcast what are you trying to monetize it etc and I was like not really mm. it's like I, I genuinely hadn't started the podcast with an intention of here's the plan this is what I'm setting out to do which some people argue that's not the right thing to do but I did it didn't expect to get the people I did on it didn't expect to build the network I have and yeah I just I don't think you realize the opportunities and it's hard to get around people that have the same interests so hard to get around people that have the same like mindset as you and a podcast is the perfect place to do that because you sat there for an hour and they can't leave. They can. <laughs> we just lock the doors I mean, they on can't, the way they out. can't exactly get up and leave. <laughs> like that, you're glued to the seat. <laughs> but yeah, that was good. What's been your favourite part of the podcast? Ooh. Oh, now you put me on the spot. Um, I think it's the people. Yeah. I genuinely do. I think it's the people and then also, again, seeing you 
every week being like, oh God, I've got to ask them all these questions. Oh, yeah. I've got to learn this new thing. Like you've got to learn their industry almost yeah. to be able to understand it and go in. And then on the day being a bit like, oh, like get a new I person, I've got to yeah. speak to them kind of thing. And then actually watching you do it and go, was that all right? It's like, was it all right? Was it all right? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. I think like, you question it. Amazing. I'll never forget, we had a podcast and the guy didn't turn up. Hmm. No, <laughs> I didn't turn up there. And we were like, right, great. So I made you sit there and ask, ask me questions. There's a common theme when people don't yeah. turn up. Thieves is like, have you got any makeup on? Yeah. Okay, sit down. That will do it. Yeah. And you were like, by the end of it, you were knackered. Yeah. And you went, how do you ask the questions? Bring it back and think about what they're saying. I genuinely don't know how you do it. Like, I don't. I still don't. I still, like, I'm like, oh, <laughs> we need questions. You do. Like, no. like, but I don't know how your brain works like that. I think it's just conversating with someone and not... I think, I think a lot of podcasts are so scripted where you've got... Mm. Like, um, the first one I did, I remember having like 12 questions. And I think these are the questions I'm going to ask. Now I don't even look at my phone when I'm mm, speaking to someone. True. Because you're actually trying to get into their brain, understand their mindset. And it just be- it becomes a masterclass in a sense. Like, yeah. Like, people share their stories all the time. You can go on their Instagram, you can see their stories. But there's so much more to them in their mind that they can't always get out and you tend to get that out in a conversation as opposed mm. to just structured questions yeah 100 percent. i, I mean. feel like as well you get yeah you get to know each other as a person yeah as well instagram you only see x amount of days x amount of hours yeah. in the week so it's like really that person and their actual person are completely yeah. different yeah i'd say that for you as well you, who you are and who on your youtube versus who you are on your instagram yeah different people but yeah showing it all off yeah and YouTube. The podcast yeah it's completely different definitely YouTube's obviously more relatable raw mm. and just is us and mm. what we do and the reality is but then I feel like you get more out on a podcast as well when you're speaking to someone because you wouldn't know that say this time in December going back now quickly going back <laughs> because I'm like the reason we started growing the personal brand in January is because so much went on in the December as well mm. so for those that don't know I basically renewed the business restructured the team and everyone was originally in house now everyone isn't everyone's remote mm. so that was a big transition period as well yeah and it then was just us in the office so it wasn't having to tell everyone to leave the office yeah because the team's now all remote so that was like a big that thing. is why I think this year has gone so so almost so successful with it yeah. because partly because it is just you and me yeah which when it was in December it yeah. was okay can you leave the office because we need to film yeah. whereas now it's just we're gonna go film yeah it's film just, this, there's no film that. there's like and film everything as yeah. well so it's, it is just getting yeah. on with it almost the only the only downside to that is I want to share more of the team and I want to mm. be like I said to like Amaya will you film this or yeah. Bills will you film this and Lloyd while, you, while you're there doing your Google ads can you film and he's like I'm literally sat at my laptop what do you want me to do <laughs> but I'm like that's kind of what you want to share but it's hard to incorporate the full team aspect yeah. Um, but yeah I've gone back on that guys but we'll come back so where are we at now you're at March okay moving on to March This was, I think, one of the big things. I think this was one of the big things. So this was your first networking event on your own, like fully. Yeah. Went on your own, drove yourself, turned (laughs) up. Drove (laughs) drove everywhere. (laughs) Normally you've got a friend in the car, but you fully went on your own. Yeah. So I went to my first networking event and as I was invited to that because of the first episode with Zoe Trigwell. Yes. So we did the episode with Zoe and then shout out to where Shaz, Shaz Gale, um, messaged me and invited me to a networking event. And he literally was like, oh, it's in like two days time. And I'm like, yeah, yeah I'll go. <laughs> Dying on the inside. <laughs> like, do I go? Do I not go? Do I go? Do I, I go? was like, I, I don't know. Can I go? Can I go on my own? Phoebe, can you come with me? No, Phoebe, you don't need to come with me. I'll go on my own. No, I can't go. I'll go. I might go. <laughs> I was like, I think just go to the event. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And then I went, I think it was on a Saturday, wasn't it? I think so, yeah. I drove and I was literally sweating the entire way, nervous. I was like, this is so nervous. And I remember parking outside on Double Yellows because I thought, I tried to drive into this car park and I was like, the door didn't open. And I was like, open sesame. <laughs> and it wouldn't open. And I was like, right, okay, I'm not walking 10 minutes to where it is because I had heels on as well. And I was like, no, I could fall, die, break a neck, break an ankle. And then I can't get back from Birmingham because I'm stranded. <laughs> So I was like, right, okay, I'll just park on Double Yellows and get the ticket and just hope I don't get towed. Imagine that. Car's been towed. I'm in heels walking back from Birmingham. <laughs> walking back from Birmingham. And I'd be like, guys, I came on my own. I need help. Literally. <laughs> like, 
So I remember walking into the actual event itself and seeing, we call him Little Aaron, he's not Little Aaron, he's Tall Aaron. Um, and I seen him and I was like, oh, you lost. He was like, no, no. I said, oh, me too. And he was like, oh yeah. So okay. yeah, let's go together. <laughs> and I clung to him like an octopus. I was like, <laughs> and we went in. And um, I just remember it was so busy when I walked in, but I was like, ah, oh, I'm meant to be here. Like yeah. these people are so nice. Yeah. And it was the best thing I ever did. Just go and network. Yeah. Like, it's all the same thing. I don't really help you with any of the networking. I no, feel like just... that was one of the things where it was like, oh, like, this is all just me. This yeah. is a room I'm in. I can be with these people and completely have a nice time and network yeah. and get to know as many people as I can. Yeah. And it be a really positive experience. Yeah, I think like, this is what people don't share. They don't, sh- they, like, if you looked at my Instagram, you'd see, like, the confidence in me mm. going to these events and be yeah. like, oh, I'm just there. But the reality is most of us are really nervous when we Mm. go and your first one is always going to be nerve wracking. And I think people need to share that so that other people can relate to it and go, this is an okay feeling. Like I remember wearing a high neck top because I was like, I'm going to get a nervous rush. (laughs) <laughs> I remember when you had your blazer on, fully all black, everything, and like black the turtleneck. <laughs> I was like, I can tell she's nervous. She put the turtleneck on I to did. the rush. I put everything on. I was so hot in that room, but I was like, I just need to be chill. But I think as well, what was hard was actually speaking about me. Mm. So people were like, oh, tell me about you. And I was like, so me and the team. So yeah. we, because I'd always compared everything to the team we Definitely. and it wasn't like oh well, what do you do I was like oh I've got this and we do this and mm. so that was quite difficult to like, oh, yeah well. but I find that now if we go to events if people yeah. ask me so what do you do and I'm like sorry what yeah. what do I what do I don't even know yeah <laughs> like, I, I film Abby yeah <laughs> and then it's I explain everything... who you are and I'm yeah. like oh so this is Abby and I'm, like, and I'm like oh wait and then he's like oh what do you do I'm like uh do you know what one of the things with that is though is because I think a lot of people they've got like employees Mm. and they would see someone as going okay well this is your job or you're a content creator you're a social Mm. media manager I don't compare any of my staff to oh my social media manager Mm. or oh my content creator I'll be like Phoebe Amaya everyone is compared to as a person and they're Mm. treated as though they're them Mm. not like a number because they're not true yeah yeah so it's like I think that's what I've always done. So when it comes to like asking people, like, "Oh, what do you do?" It's because like, you're not instilled in you that this is your this is your, is job your one thing that you do. Yeah, yeah. completely. Yeah, I get yeah. that. It's more like yeah. you're you, hundred percent. Yeah. Um. So that was we were March. Yeah. So yeah, we're shout out March. to Chad by the way because you are unbelievable. You are literally one of my best friends, and I met such sick people at that event. Because also, Shazza Gale. Just to explain that, because you said where Shaz Shazza Gale. People may not know. <laughs> okay, so where Shaz is known as where Shaz and yeah. Shaz a girl. I think I made that up on our podcast. <laughs> um, Abigail. Shaz. Shaz, <laughs> Shaz a girl. Simple as. <laughs> that is literally what the podcast title should have been. Shaz a girl. Just Shaz a girl. I know, yeah. So you can listen to one of our podcasts there and I've also spoken on Shaz's podcast. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so April. 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 Oh, this was a this was a big month to be fair. This what it was. It was a big month. So I feel like we've not spoken a lot about agency clients along the way. And just to point out, we've got NDAs with so many different clients that we're so not allowed it. to talk about. <laughs> so I'll only try and speak about the things that I can speak about. Um, but we signed one of the biggest dessert chains in the UK in April at the agency. And I remember going to that meeting. I drove to Preston. Preston. I think it was Preston because a lot of our meetings are on Zoom on there. Mm. And he invited me down. And I remember walking in and I was like, oh, I feel like I'm not like, like I, didn't, I don't think I've actually done a meeting like that in person mm. where I'd gone one on one. I remember sitting down and he wanted to try and poach me as an in-house member of staff. He was like, oh, so are you going to come and work in here? I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. And I remember him saying, so what have you brought for me? Where's your portfolio? I remember sitting at the table and he went, so what have you brought for me? Where, where, where's your like presentation portfolio? Something. And I said, I've not brought anything. I said, I've brought me. I said, because at the end of the day, you're buying into me. And the business. I'm not here to try and sell you anything right now. We need to know if we can actually work together in a partnership. And after that, I remember him saying, he was like, I need to work with you guys. He was like, you've not come with anything. You've just shown up as you. And you've been like, right, let's look at the business. Let's look at your socials. Let's look at what we can actually do for you. And yeah, we signed them. I feel like some of those, though, are like the best ones. Yeah. Best clients are like where you've almost... They've bought into you and they've bought into Aventus and they've bought into what we can do rather than just like... 
here's a Canva presentation. Of what, do you yeah. know what I mean? I think you like, can't do that anymore. You can't go up to someone and say, right, I can guarantee you this. Or mm. here's the results that I've achieved for 10 other clients. Because everyone's situations are different. Mm. And you can't say, well, I achieved this for someone. So I'm going to do the same for you. Because everyone's different. And that might not be the case. And you're setting these dead high expectations that you might not be able to uphold. And then you leave, you lose the client relationship based on false promises that you should never have made in the beginning. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Do you want to nurture that relationship? But yeah, we sign them. And we also podcast. Podcast? Yeah. 24 Club. 24 Club. Jacob, you're you're involved in this, by the way. 25. Yeah, but we were 20, 20, 24 at the time. You were? This was April. Oh, oh maybe you he lied. He lied. He lied about his age on this podcast. We may have filmed it prior. I'm not <laughs> sure. Well, it was it was Katie or it was Bobby Be Fit. Yeah, there was the same day. Me, Katie, Katie Orr from Kyoto Co- Co- Estates. Um, there was Bobby Be Fit, and you, Jacob. And we sat there, and the most inspiring thing of that day was we were all basically 24, but you lied about your age because you're 24. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember though? Do you remember? I remember. Yeah. I said I was 25. Oh, oh okay. I'll let you off. I'll let you off. <laughs> this is us planning a I know, podcast yeah. in 19 <laughs> minutes before we drove it. <laughs> like, oh my God, we were all 24. I was saying like, we were all basically the same age. So I remember sitting there and I was like, we're all in the same room doing completely different things, working for ourselves. Mm. And the four of us are just Smashing making it. it happen. Yeah. Obviously, Katie is in property. Bobby's in fitness. Um, Jacob obviously runs the podcast studio. Like... I get up every day and make it happen. <laughs> no. I watch my fringe. I watch my fringe. <laughs> no, but I think it was just insane to sit there and say, we're all doing it. Mm. We're and all you're all in out. such different things as well. Yeah. I think you're all being so successful in such different things is quite inspiring. Yeah. Because you don't need to go yeah. down one route. Hmm. I think it can be difficult when you're looking at social media when everyone's talking about the ways you can be successful because there's so many different routes. Yeah. You're in school and they're like, you need this job role, this job role, this job mm. role. You're in on social media and it's like, you can do X, Y, Z. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There's just so many. That was even backwards, wasn't it? <laughs> it didn't even make any sense. But that exactly, it doesn't make any sense because people are getting overwhelmed because there's so much going on. True. But you can make it in any avenue. Exactly. Which also leads on to four business owners came and did a mini mastermind. Yeah, I did you. my first mini mastermind. Yeah. In, is it April? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So did my first mini mastermind with... what? Did, who did we have at that? We had fitness. We had... Beauty. Beauty, training academies, and we also had property mm-hmm. um, and cleaners. And we had cleaners. Yeah. yeah. So that was my first mini mastermind. And again, that was so random because I was like, I love speak. I realized when I started networking that I love speaking to people. I love getting to know people, their journeys, and mm-hmm. I love helping people. And I found that the events that I was going to, I was the only person. So going back to that Shaz event, that mm-hmm. was a property event, and I wasn't in property at the time, was I? So me going into that room doing social media, everyone was interested because they needed help. Mm. So then when I did the mastermind, none of these people worked in social media. I wasn't trying to coach marketers. They just got involved. And I think that's, I, do you know what? There's just so much. Cause if you think about it in December as well, I launched the agency course. Yeah, you did. So that went live in Jan. And I realized after that mastermind, I should have made my agency course targeting service-based business owners. Mm. So that's what we're now working on now with the accelerator, aren't we? To readjust everything. Because mm. that's where I found that my niche was catering and helping service-based business owners expand and monetize their social media. 100%. Yeah. 100%. But that was a good, that was a good event. And we did that reel, didn't we? Where it was like competition, whoever creates the best reel. Oh, yeah, 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 we yeah. did. We did. We'll insert here. <laughs> <laughs> then we headed over to the event which was at gateway house with aventus and abby it was such a good event it was just a social media marketing event and we learned so much from it can't thank abby enough <laughs> um moving on to may may we both looked at may and went what even happened in may i feel like we oh, Guys, we were literally on the way here. We were scrolling through our pictures going, because we wanted to do this. We wanted to do a yearly yeah. roundup, but we hadn't planned on doing it in 19 minutes. <laughs> um, so May, we went to Blackpool Expo yes. and we filmed it. Yes, we did. So um, we went to our first business expedition where I wanted to go into a business expo, stay, same, similar way to the trade shows, wanted to meet new businesses, see if I can get any clients and just network and also create content doing it. So the aim was to show people how you can network in person. That is, sorry, Blackpool Business Expo. That was one of the most boring events I've ever been to in my life. It was, it was. We walked in and we were like, 
Oh. I was like, like it was tiny. I mean, we were we are comparing to the to NEC, yeah. which is massive. Like, yeah. but the NEC is known to be the big one. The big one. But yeah. even so, it was like maybe twenty stalls. She's dead, wasn't it? But like half of them, they'd gone for a cup of tea. Yeah. Like there was no one yeah. to speak to. Yeah. Or there was one person who was speaking to someone else who so couldn't really almost get in there. Yeah. And it was just we ended up speaking to like two agencies that we yeah. weren't gonna get. There just wasn't anyone yeah. there to speak to. I think what we realised then was we'd been to these trade shows where we were the only person there mm. talking about what we had to offer. We then went to a business expo. That I think in your head you think, if I go to a business expedition, I'm going to speak to people and I'm going to get business. Mm. When in reality we went into a room where there was 20 stalls and probably 50% of them were at agencies. Yeah. So you're all competing against each other, trying to get that business. They'd paid for stands, but there was no one there to talk to because there was no one else walking around. Mm. So they were talking to each other. So it was... You put yourself in somewhere where you think you're going to get business when really you just become a big fish in a small pond. Is that right? I was going to say this before, but I can't remember what That's what it is, is, isn't it? Not, yeah. You go to a trade show and you're a small fish in a big pond. Yes, you're a right? big fish in a small pond. Yeah. yeah. We always said yeah, that's yeah. so wrong. But, but yeah, so that was interesting. We actually ended that day by we left and I was like, I've never been to Blackpool before. Oh, yeah, this yeah, this was fun, actually. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did you forget? I'm offended. No, I completely forgot that like, we went to Blackpool. Oh. Look at all that scenery. <laughs> <laughs> no, but look. It's so open. <laughs> oh, my God. The scenery. God. Look at the scenery. Gosh. Look at the pier. The pier. Oh, my God. I'm right. trying to zoom out. <laughs> Do you know what? This is so fun. Like, this is in the UK. We've never been here before. <laughs> I feel deprived as a child. <laughs> Guys, we've just been saying, well, no, I've just been saying, oh my gosh, Pete, it's like, the accent in that one is so different. And she said, yeah, Abby, that's because she's Scottish. <laughs> There's a Mercedes G wagon over there, and it's really nice. It's a matte black one. Do you want to see what we're eating? In fact, I'll show you a better clip. We didn't wait to show you. So I hope you really enjoyed what we're eating, but I'm sorry that this is so zoomed in. I'll learn how to use it one day. Um, but yeah. Blackpool. I rate it. Hello. <laughs> we literally went to Blackpool. Oh my god, in your shoes. Oh, I remember me. you had the worst boots on and you were literally walking up and down Blackpool. They front, cut me to pieces. And you went and stuffed toilet roll down your shoes and I was like... I wrapped my... We went to that yeah. fish and chip place that was meant yeah. to be like the best place ever. It was I stuck right. it on my story and someone messaged me and they were like, I can't believe you're eating that. I was like, I've just eaten all of it. <laughs> yeah, like it's just fish and chips. Like. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, I wrapped my legs in tissue because I was in agony. And then we went to the arcade. Oh my God, yeah, we did. Yeah. Went to the arcade and you beat me on the VR headsets. I did. I'm not competitive much. <laughs> you were competitive. I am really competitive. Because you as well. Because in person, time. I would well beat you on a race. 100%. I don't even think I could get on a motorbike. Like, <laughs> you got on that VR thing and you were gone. I was gone. I loved it. But me on an actual motorbike, I'd probably just like fall over. My balance isn't very good. But no. That was May. That was May. June. Then June, oh my gosh, if I could go back to this, I would go back to this. So June, do you know what, May probably felt quiet because I was mentally preparing myself. I'd been away the year before to Marbella for like the weekend, wasn't it? I'd done the yeah, bank holiday weekend. Yeah, it was the bank holiday weekend, yeah. Friday to Monday and that was the first time I'd been away in like four years. Then this to this year, I hadn't been away properly, ever since launching these businesses and I was going away for, was it 10 days to Mexico? It was 10 days to Mexico. And I remember thinking, I'm going to go back to nothing. <laughs> you thought that. <laughs> I was thinking, how on earth do I keep for this? Like, what do I do? I know. Like, uh. So I was like, oh, but really, we were filming content and the team yeah. do all the works. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it was just in my head, I was like, leaving your baby is like, I actually genuinely felt like I was leaving my baby in the car outside. Don't do that. If you ever have a baby, don't yeah, ever obviously leave not. Baby I'm not going to go to Mexico for 10 days. It depends on how difficult life gets, but I'm joking. Don't, <laughs> don't hold me to that. Don't leave the baby with me. Oh my God. <laughs> like, don't leave the baby with me. But yeah, I mentally but, prepared myself and we went to Mexico for 10 days and switched off, had the reset mm. I needed. And it was the best thing. Mm. I still worked while I was out there. Mm. 
came out with loads yeah. of ideas got loads of content i think when you came back that was a massive almost reset yeah where you came back and literally just smashed i think it was the first day you were back it was the monday you came back on the saturday or something like that yeah. where you just had call after call after call yeah and you were closing everyone yeah and just going these are the 10 new people that i've signed at the agency and we're yeah. all going huh? how did that happen yeah you I were just... away like how what on earth I think when, do you know what I found? The day I got, so I got to Mexico, it took us 24 hours to get there because our flights were cancelled and things. And I remember I got up in the morning, I started creating content because I was like, I need to make the most of this. Chilled all day. But then when I was chilling all day, I literally was like, well, I'm listening to podcasts, I'm reading a book. Then I'm thinking about different people I could reach out to. And I think you don't, I didn't believe in burnout until Mm. that holiday. Yeah, that, I remember you did come back and you were like, that was burnout. Yeah. Like, it's like it I really was, was. I was ruined in a sense because I think when times get difficult, I always, or in my head, if I think I'm going to have a blip, I don't give myself mm. that time. So I'll just go, right, okay, I need to sit here and be like, ugh, or I'll just put it into work. So put everything into work. And then when I went away, I was like, right now I can just chill. The sun, the sun changes everything. <laughs> See, we are so different. I know. <laughs> like, I love holiday. I'm like, mm. I know you don't like the sun that much. Yeah, I'm ginger. I just burn. <laughs> like, what do you expect? <laughs> like, literally, me and my dad, like, in the shade. My mum's, like, basking exactly how you yeah. would be. And it's like, no. You know, I'm wrapped in a towel fort. Yeah. <laughs> if I went on holiday, I'd show you my towel fort. I'd normally take, like, three towels with me. Basically make a tent. <laughs> I go on holiday, I came back, and I was like, right, Phoebe, you've got ten clients. You came on holiday, came back with a thing of rocks. <laughs> It did. These are the rocks I always the bring I rocks and shells back, but but really good for product photography. They <laughs> like are. When we want they clients are. that are like beachy vibes, yeah. get a bag of sand and get some rocks from your holiday trip. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Done. That is so true. That is so true. And not the yeah. holiday. Well, this one wasn't okay. really a holiday holiday, but... This was because... So, obviously, I went to Mexico and thought, well, do you know what? I can work from anywhere in the world here. I love it. You went to Mexico and then... Um, and I was like, oh, my God, she's back. Like, yeah. she's actually back. I, this is amazing. Yeah. We can get back to normal. Yeah. No, no, no. No. Like, three weeks later, you were like... I think it might have been less. It might have been less. It I might am being less. nice there. But it was like, maybe, maybe two and a half. Yeah. Two and a half weeks. My mum was two. going to Florida for, like, two and a half weeks, wasn't she? I remember you went for, like three and a half weeks it was like two and a half to three no I'm sure it was like three and a bit weeks because you had the weekends on the other end and I was like sorry what my mum was going to Florida with the family and I was like really I can work in Florida I said the time zone difference difference might kill me Mm. a little bit I was like but I can work there so I booked my flight like four days before it and I was like right I'm coming and they were like you're coming I was like yeah yeah, I'm coming so I went to Florida and worked in Florida for three weeks yeah I did and you know what it was quite good to be fair like it was nothing the, the business didn't crumble like, I documented the whole thing everything went really well I worked I got up you, at four you o'clock you documented the whole thing and has since not given me the clips any of the clips I, so, do you know what it's a good video as well one day it will be posted it will it will <laughs> like I literally documented the whole thing to the point where I showed you one of the videos and you were like it's like watching a reality TV show because <laughs> I was just like filming it, the whole family were in one room like it was amazing um but yeah, so I got up at four o'clock in the morning most days and in the villa, there was nowhere to like do calls. Mm. So I had to like like roll this table into my room, this like bar stool and balance on that at four in the morning every day. This is what we end up working with. We take the table from the landing, we stick it in our room and we make it work. Then I knew that when the family got up, it was like nah, I'm not going to say anything down to be mm. fair, five hours, it was two two or three o'clock in the UK so I'd work from like four to eleven in Florida everyone would then go home in the UK and my day would start (laughs) I felt like I was working 24 (laughs) 7 I was exhausted but it was also I'd do it I remember you liked it though because people then didn't bother you I felt like no one bothered me yeah I feel like you got stuff done everything was done really early and then you've got the whole rest of your day I felt like I created hours. Like I genuinely felt like I'd created extra time because everyone would go home at like eleven o'clock in the UK, in the US time, and then I had like eleven until whenever I went to sleep to mm. work on new ideas, look for new clients, do all this. When really I just got up earlier. Yeah, I hadn't invented time. I just got up earlier. Yeah, 
True. So, moral of the story is, if you ever feel like you've, you've got too much on your plate, just get off earlier. I don't think that would work in the UK, though. I'm sorry to, like, burst the bubble, but because people would still bother you all day. Oh, yeah, I think because if, because you're in a different time zone, you had that extra time in the afternoon oh, yeah. because everyone... I did create time. ...went to sleep. I so, created time. <laughs> I think I could tell that. Guys, I can create time in what? 30 days. <laughs> If you're struggling, just go on, on holiday. <laughs> just go to Florida. Just change your time zone. Exactly. Create more hours in the day. It yeah, works. Exactly. That is a thing. Okay, July. so yeah. August. Oh, there's so many things in these next points. I know there is. There is. Okay, so August. Birthday. I turn 25. Quarter life. Quarter life. We're not going to say crisis. Okay. <laughs> Quarter life crisis. No. I haven't shaved my head just yet. No. I haven't dyed it. We haven't blonde. done a Britney. Um... We are turned 25 and um, yeah, it hit me on my 25th birthday because I was like, holy moly, I'm getting old. And then was like, holy moly, how have I got here? I remember thinking, I was in school like yesterday and now I'm here. Where am I? What have I done? How did I get here? How did this even happen? This was never a plan. <laughs> this was on the list. <laughs> Should have done a business plan. <laughs> so yeah, turned 25. Um, spoke on my first podcast. You did. Yeah. You did. It yeah. was a good one. We went to London. Yeah. Today's guest, she actually started entrepreneurship at the age of 14. She has a six figure social media agency company. So please welcome Abigail Clark. We did. Yeah. It, everything happened. Yeah, I went yeah, to London, yeah. spoke on Sean Land's podcast. Yes. Shout out to Sean Land. Um, he's an amazing guy. And I spoke on his podcast for two hours. And by the end of that podcast, Sean, I was starved. I'm not going to lie as well. <laughs> we walked in thinking it was going to be like a normal... It was like an hour. hour. No, it was like two hours. Two hours. It was like, oh, we need some dinner. Yeah, I was like, starved. We really need that. some dinner. Yeah, but it's mad. You, you, you're trying to speak about your story and you... It's mm. ours. It is. It is. Yeah. I'll never forget you editing my YouTube story. This is coming. That was coming. Yeah. So Sean did a podcast with me for two hours to get my story, and we still could have spoke for longer. You edited my YouTube full story, guys, from when I was a child. It was so from when you, yeah, when first I fell out of the womb. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, it was first business. So fourteen. Okay, so when I was fourteen. 40. Thirty-seven minutes it was, and you no, didn't it wasn't. Let me... It was thirty-eight. <laughs> Sorry, I know this because I edited it, but you never let me live it down. I remember. It was the first time we'd done a longer form video. Yeah. And my brain just fell off. I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> I can't. Because every time you need to readjust a clip, you've got to watch 30 Everything. minutes. <laughs> and my brain was like, I've heard this story like 15 times and I'm really tired. I don't want to do it anymore. Sometimes if I get fed up with a video, I'm just like, just leave oh. it put it in the background yeah she's like if I get fed up of your story and the reason we're here but ju just leave it in the background <laughs> Never. so yeah spoke but. on his podcast which was insane we and then, then the same day mm -hmm. this was so this was we went to London yeah for multiple reasons but we went mainly for the podcast and then we went back to the hotel had some dinner it was six o'clock yeah and then we went you know what now we are going to go and shoot content yeah food has been devoured I'm so tired now, but the day isn't over. We now, it's 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. We've had a sausage butty this morning at eight and this has been our second meal and we were starving. And now we're going to go and shoot for a client. But wait and see you see the pool. I've not seen it yet, neither has Veeves, but we're excited to see it. We are very excited. Let's go. It was so hot as well, it was, wasn't it? It was really, it was really nice though. Yeah, in their rooftop pool, which I'm not gonna lie, was the best. The we best stayed trip. in Arto's Hell. Yeah, and it had like a rooftop bar, rooftop bar, rooftop pool. Yeah. It was insane, wasn't it? Um, um, this was for this trickier of clients. Yeah. yeah. So we'd taken on a client yeah. and took them on the month prior. Now completely over delivered for this client from yeah. day one, haven't yeah. we? Like I took their stock to Florida with me. Mm. I created content in Florida. No, I don't do that. Anyone who knows that, like we've got boundaries with every client because mm. it's not fair to over deliver for one or not the other but anyway this client was struggling weren't they mm. so we 
I shot content in Florida. We went, when I went to the podcast, I told them I was mm-hmm. going there. So they said, I said, listen, this is where we're going to stay. Do you want to send us content? Cause we can get some amazing like summer content for yeah. you. We took it there and we went to this five star hotel, didn't we? We were on the rooftop bar. In our robes. In our robes. Our lovely robes. With these trainers on. Oh. And we were doing all these shoots and we were yeah. getting this content and people were staring at us and they were like, what are you doing? Everyone's like proper like, not up to themselves, but kind yeah, of like. But they were, you could tell there were people trying to relax. Yeah. And we're, nice sat time. Going, and we're sat with our iPhones going, right, stamp one, <laughs> stamp two. Okay. Splash your feet in the water. Splash your feet in the, okay, there's not a bald man behind you that I just trying to edit out like. I was trying to edit this board and swim it out of the background. We actually did. We did it. And I think that was some of... We worked really hard. We worked so hard for that client. We really, really did. Um, Now, that is a story that is going to come. It's not going to come just yet. Mm. But we're going to talk about this because this is not just a YouTube value. This Mm. is things that happens in every business where people go through things, they over-deliver for certain people and they try and deliver. And all I'll say is it's not always meant to be. Yeah. this is a story that I want to raise awareness about Mm. and I know that a lot of people do it a lot of business owners do it and some of us end up getting screwed we do and because of that that's why we want to share our story on that so that will be coming soon guys I'm not sure when Mm. once everything is sorted that will be coming soon regardless of the situation it will be coming yeah the reality of it will yeah it's gonna come out and we're gonna make something of it yeah um to be those to... people that are like, we've got something coming. We've got something coming. But we can't tell you what. <laughs> but you will want to watch <laughs> but it. But you will want to watch it, yeah. And I went to Marbella. And I went to Marbella. Yeah, I went to Marbella. I should have said that so for... high pitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that was for the end of... So, because I'd done it the year before. Yeah. On that bank holiday weekend, came back and I was like, I'm a sheep. It's like, right, I'm going to go again. <laughs> Literally, it was like, every month, you're yeah. like, I'm going. I've had enough. <laughs> Goodbye. See you later. Are you all right? You'd come back, check in and be like, is everything fine? Everything's yeah. fine? Okay, bye. <laughs> like, I'm not. Like, it was bank holiday weekend. You weren't even in. Yeah, you'd been off for three weeks and then 10 days and then another bank holiday. I was like, <laughs> she's gone. <laughs> she's gone forever. Yeah. No, okay. I knew though that when as soon as I came back, I was buying the house and I was renovating and my life was going to go from glam to not so glam. Not so glam. <laughs> yeah, no. so yeah, I went to Marbella for the weekend. Mm. Um, do you know what I realised when I was in Marbella? I had a client, well, potential client reach out to me for my gym law list. Yes. Yeah. So while I was away, someone was really stuck for fulfilment. They didn't know how to find factories. And that's when I realised I was like, hold on. I've built these insane factories up over the years. I'm just sat on this information. So then that turned into a business of helping people with factories and stuff and being able to sell on my list. So do you know what? When I go away, it makes sense. It does. I'm not the complaint is only because I don't get to see you. Because as well, but when you come back, every time you've come back, you've been like, right, I've got this business idea, I want to do this, this yeah. is the new step, this is how we're gonna do this, and it does I don't know how to explain it, but it does like jig everything back up again where it's like, oh yeah, oomph. Like, yeah, oomph. It gives let's it everything. It's like a bit more oomphy. Yeah. It's like, yeah, let's go. Yeah. Like, yeah, 100%. So that was good. Where are we at? September. 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 Movie premiere. Yeah, I went to my first movie premiere. Yeah. Went. went to London on your own. Yeah. That was, because we'd been to London, I think it was two weeks where we'd been twice yeah. and stayed over in the same hotel because we just loved it. Yeah. And then this was one where you were like, no, on my own yeah fully yeah so went to movie premiere on my own so tom invited me and i remember putting this big dress on i was so nervous guys sweating again <laughs> the rash. The ra- no i was thinking i can't have a rash because i'm wearing a low like i could sorry Ooh. mike i'm in a dress like this so turned up at the movie premiere on my own and met whoa, i met claire claire was unreal like the people at that event were insane um and yeah so i went to celebrate mm. tom smith for Rise of the Foot Soldier. So grateful for the invite there. Tom was a client as well. So it was exciting. It all kind of came together. And yeah, I was a big girl. I did say I'd get the tube. I didn't, I got a taxi. See, this is the thing now. We are basic, basically, basically, basically Southerners. Like we are tubing it. When did we do the podcast with Venture Rooms? That was the second week. So we'd done Sean Lands and then we did Venture Rooms like the week after. So was that in the... That was in the August. No, it wasn't. No, that was in September. Oh, it must have been the end of August, start of September. Yeah, so we all, yeah, so we'd done the movie premiere and then we'd also done the podcast on yeah. Venture Rooms, which is something we hadn't spoke about, which was, I love that. Yeah. You got kicked out of the room. 
you did. <laughs> we couldn't offer. Downstairs and got a diet coke. Do you know what like... was the maddest thing about that event? That podcast though. So spoke of that podcast as we were leaving. Mm. In like the whole bit, there was like a DJ session going on. Wasn't yeah, there, I like know. 10 people? I was there. Yeah. the whole time, and they yeah. were like, "Are you part of the DJ club?" And I was like. No, <laughs> but they were there, and then a few weeks later, some someone messaged me on Instagram. Was like, "Oh, we were you? Did you do your podcast at this place? Was it the queue? No, I can't remember what, sure it's called. what it's called." And um, I was like, "Yeah, yeah." And he said, "Oh, I seen you leaving. I recognised you from social media, and I've just came across your reel." And I was like, "That's so mad! Like the power of social media. Like how as well? Like how small the world yeah. is to be just it randomly somewhere. ten people in that room and someone exactly. recognises you. Like exactly that. Like it's mental. I know." So, cool. movie premiere was amazing. We launched season two of the podcast. Yes. Filmed the first episode with we my did. dad. Um, we also went to a second trade show. We went to the Autumn Fair oh, in went, September. Okay. Yes. Went to the Autumn Fair. And do you know what the best thing about that event was? That our clients had come together. Yes. So two of our clients had actually become friends. They'd gone mm. to dinner together. Yeah. And we were the agency of both of them. Yeah. And I was like, that's so cute. Yeah, it was really cute. Yeah. It was good to see everyone. Yeah, it was nice because we knew that, so basically one of our clients from Dubai, from Abu Dhabi, mm. sorry, I always get them confused. Yeah. Abu Dhabi had come over to the trade show. Mm. While they were there, they didn't realise our other client was there. They then ended up going for dinner together and we didn't know that our other client was there. So when we'd gone to see... We, yeah, we were them, like, wait, you've had dinner with e- they, what, they're here. They're here. Because as well, the layout of the thing was completely different. Yeah. It so was. trying to find our way around, mm. it's mental. If anyone's been to a trade show, you know how mental it is, how compact everything is. You can walk past a, a yeah. stand and not even realise. So like we just had no idea that we were there and we were like, yeah. oh, like we need to go see the bow. Like, yeah. Let's go so see we got them. to go yeah. to our event. One of the things about that event though was it was dead. Yeah, it was. I think the spring fair is massive yeah I think the autumn fair not many people because you've been to the spring fair yeah I think they're just a bit like it's going to be the same stuff it was still good so, though for us though because yeah. there was not for the business owners we felt tight yeah there was no one there buying but what there was was loads of business owners that wanted to make sales and because of that yes. they needed social media because they were like this just isn't working for mm. us right now so we ended up getting quite a lot from that in terms yeah. of leads and things so that was good as well there was a lot of just business owners standing around going I don't know what to do. I'm just standing here. Yeah. No so one's coming to speak thing. to you, mate. Okay, I'll speak to you, buy into you, yeah. and then eventually yeah. the client. Can't so, say about it. Yeah, 100%. And we did a personal branding shoot. We did do a personal branding shoot. Sorry, I you was were like, what? At the oh, wrong did month. we? <laughs> yeah. We went yes, to a content we house did. and we shot else. Yes. Did a personal branding shoot. Now- We do content all the time, but the reason I wanted to do that personal branding shoot was because I wanted more pictures that were more, I'm going to say professional because we were spe- I was due to speak at an event and I needed pictures for that because I kept getting sent all these invitations to speak at events and they were putting pictures of me on. I was like, I'm in a hoodie, I'm in yeah. gym wear. Yeah. It's like, I really need to, you know, sort my shizzle out yeah. over here. Get in so, a blazer. Yeah. yeah. So we did the shoot, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. I love that shoot. Which I actually, yeah, do you know what? We went in there. Yeah. And we literally, we said, right, we've got two hours. Yeah. We are not going to stop. And we didn't. We didn't we stop. We literally got in there. <laughs> they do have cameras in there, which abs is known to just get changed. Doesn't matter <laughs> where. Doesn't matter. And we didn't realise until you were basically butt naked that there was a camera right above you. <laughs> you literally <laughs> went, there's cameras in here, you know? I said, oh, really? And you were like, yeah, 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 just be careful. And I went, where? I looked up. Literally. It was above my head. <laughs> With the and I out, was like, like, okay. Okay, brilliant. If I just stay still. <laughs> it's like, she could hold us to ransom. <laughs> <laughs> you think? She could sell this. She could sell this online. <laughs> like, yeah, but, she could hold us to ransom. <laughs> But that shoot was manic, but amazing. Yeah, we got, we got so done. much done. We did so, so much. much. I love that. Then October. October. This is a big one. Yeah. This was, I think, again, massive. I think this is probably one of the biggest things of the year. Yeah. Really, was your first speaking event. It was on my goals list. My goals list was, I've never spoke on camera before, but I want to speak on stage. I remember we went to the EMC and I was like, I want to speak on stage. So I really want to do it. I was like, I don't know why I want to do it, but I really want to do it. So yeah, spoke at the Hona event 
Um, again, was really, really nervous. They didn't actually know it was my first speaking event. I hadn't actually said it because I thought no matter what, I'm just going to go and do my best. Like they don't need to know it's my first. I didn't want yeah. them to be like, oh, she's not done it before. How's she going to be? I just knew I wanted to go and be like, regardless, I'm going to give you the best, best knowledge, best value. And the people that I met, the, I remember after that event, I was trying to, people were like, oh, I'm just dead nervous to like speak on camera. And I said, when I was nervous, I used to put my phone in the car and just balance it and speak, speak on camera. And at the end of it, I got tagged in so many videos of people speaking in their car. It was so cute. I remember we were in the hotel and we were just like, look at all these people tagging yeah. you. Like, it was really cute. Literally, like, like all like, yeah, just seeing like my face on stage. And the worst thing was when we got there, they were like, oh, um, the screen isn't playing. So they're not, we're not going to be able to show your slides. But I'd revised, I'd literally rehearsed my slides over and over and over. I was like, oh, okay, it's fine. Don't worry, I'll know them. And then when they put them on, obviously I'd seen my slides in small, but I'd put my reality pictures on, hadn't I? Yeah. And I had, what are they called? Them white things. The nasal things. Oh, yeah. Oh, what? What are they, called? they look like a tampon that goes up your nose. They do. But when you've got a cold and you've got one of them nasal things. Like a nasal stick. Yeah. So I'd literally yeah. put like four reality pictures and one of them was this nasal stick up my nose. Where I'm like, ugh, because I was ill. And it was on the screen. And I turned around and thought, wow, that's a big screen. <laughs> that's a big head. And I look like I put a tampon shoved up my nose and I'm on stage. <laughs> <laughs> like we didn't quite realise how big. That's what people are looking at. I'm like, hi guys, be. I'm Abby. Look at my nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was really. Oh. So, yeah, that was a win. And next year, I do want to speak at more events. Yeah, 100%. And we also spoke, we did another speaking event that month. We did the Head Girls speaking event. Yeah, so Jess, Jessica Page invited me to speak to 12 Head Girls between, around the Wirral and Merseyside and mm-hmm. um, from different schools to speak about business and what they wanted to do. And- And I love that because, do you know what? It's mad how kid, like kids of today, the education system, it just hasn't updated at all. And not one of them mentioned starting a business. No. They were all talking about job roles, careers, because they were saying how risky it is to start, start a business. And I remember just saying to them, have you ever looked at how risky it is working for someone? Mm. They said, because any business can go bankrupt overnight. And then what, where are you? Mm. As they take that risk on you. And... Yeah, it was. It was. It was crazy either. to see how almost set some of them were. Yeah, they're like, I'm going to be a microbiologist. Yeah, and that is all I'm going to do. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, like it was. It was very different from coming from self-employed. I'm going to make my way. Yeah, it's very like, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> like how do I advise on this? Yeah, kind of thing. But people, people know if, if they know what they want to do, mm-hmm. amazing. But kids change their minds all the time so true some of them were very like last week I wanted to do this yeah. but now I want to do this and they were very set paths and it's very like how do you flip flop from one to the other it, but, yeah it's making yeah. it known that if you're young mm-hmm. and you're stuck in what you want to do it is okay to try something mm-hmm. hate it and to try something new yes. you are young enough to make as many mistakes as possible in the early stages when you've got no commitments mm-hmm. go and make mistakes and find your passion like make it don't just sit there and go, I need to have this one job role, this one career, and this is what's going to make me into the person I'm going to be when I'm 40, 50. It's not. Go in, learn something new. Go and figure something else out. Test it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Um, um, and I started my renovation. I was going to say the house. Got the keys to my house. And got the keys to my house. Said, because this is when I wanted to get into property. Got the keys and was like, right, I'm only going to do upstairs. I'll leave downstairs. In five weeks, I completely ripped it back to a shell plastered, skimmed, knocked walls down, built walls up, brick doors up. Hasn't got a front door right now. God. It's the 5th of December that we're filming this, by the way, because when we get to December and we go, we've had a quiet December, we yeah. haven't, it's only day five. It's because we're literally in the car, you're like, December, and I was like, it's we're the 5th. literally at the start of it. <laughs> like, how are we going to explain I'll tell you all about what's coming in December yeah. then. <laughs> so yeah, I started the renovation, hoping to have that done by January, February. Hmm. Kitchen comes in Jan, um, bathroom in Feb. 
So yeah, that is Finn and my aim with that is to refinance that project and then move on to my next project and I want to try and get my next house in March. Yes. And then do the same because guys, I'm loving it. Yeah. It's cold. It is hard. But on the weekend. But that'll be nice to have one in March because it'll be a summer project. Yeah, it will. Yeah. Not a winter project with no heating, no radiators, no electric. I was going to say no electric is the no main electric. one. Like I've literally got one. It's going dark. I'm sat there trying to paint in the dark. It's brilliant. With no test. paint so it's not drying. Love a good test. Lovely. And sound off on Jim Law's new collections. Yes. Yeah. So Jim Law's new collections are on the way. They are due to mm. land this month. There's four new collections that are launching. And yeah. All picking it up back and forth. Fuck that sentence up, didn't I? <laughs> Out. Here we go. <laughs> so yeah, picking that back up and relaunching, but there is something exciting coming with that too. Yes. Which we're not going to tell you right now because it's all a surprise. And I know, and I'm also out. looking at the time and I'm like, we really need to hurry this podcast <laughs> We need up. to get to November. Yeah, we do. Like- <laughs> November. Big one. Launched the New Era Accelerator. Yes. So going back to the agency course that I launched in December, launched an agency course where I wanted to train social media managers and agency owners. Then it became this thing that starting an agency is really, really easy and being a social media manager is easy. It's not. And if you mm-hmm. ever see any gurus that say it is, they are chatting out their bum. No business is easy. Making money is easy, mm-hmm. but keeping money is hard. Yes. Keeping customers happy is hard because results go, do go up and down. So I thought, I don't want to be this person that's like, this is what you can do. You can start an agency because you've got to be committed to it. Yes, you can achieve it, but you've got to be committed long term. So readjusted the course to launch the Accelerator and the community. So we've got the Neuro Accelerator, the Neuro Community, which is for service-based business owners where we help them monetize their social media platforms and help them with business advice as well. So we launched that, we've got 115 people in that group at the moment. It's still free to join the community. Mm -hmm. And then eventually it will be a paid community because we obviously do weekly lives, templates, everything that you ever need is going to be in that group. But yeah, that's probably one of the biggest things we've done this year as well. Yeah, I'd say that's been like a project that's been going on the whole time. The whole time. We've just been like, this is something we want to lead up to. Yeah, I think about every question that people have asked me throughout the year, how to build Mm -hmm. your personal brand, how to, where to find factories and stuff. And I know that's Mm not service based, but I want to be, if I've got that knowledge, I want to be able to share it. Yeah. So things like that. So come 2024, that will be released, the actual accelerator program. Mm -hmm. So obviously the community is live now, so you can get involved. The accelerator is due to launch in 2024. Yes. Um, I would say... Bees podcast next yeah yeah i would say you going on that podcast yeah um, and yeah. went to manchester and shot on shot on got him oh, i can't even talk <laughs> went to manchester and was invited to speak on ibi Aslim's podcast mm-hmm. and yeah i love that it was really good i feel like it was really conversational i remember it, there was like no intro it just kind of went yeah we, did. Just, we just started talking yeah i sat down on that chair we started talking and we just continued and at the end he went I think we're going to readjust this podcast because this was more like a masterclass. And I think this is what people need. <laughs> I was like, it was a masterclass, it wasn't was it? It was basically, yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's what I said earlier. Like, you can go into a podcast with structured questions, but you're not always going to get out what you need to say. Yeah. Whereas if you just conversate, mm. it's more real. The advice comes out. And he got more of my story by just having a conversation. 100%. I feel like, yeah, having more of a conversational thing is, yeah. it, it's more real. Yeah. It is. It's more authentic than... Yeah. We're just going to talk about this. Yeah. yeah. And that's due to launch in February. Yes. So everything will have changed by February. <laughs> I'll be in Dubai. No, literally, every, I'm actually going to Dubai you in February. You are actually going to Dubai. That's yeah. like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Me and Rich are going to Dubai in February for a business trip. Yes. So there is loads going on. Um, we also filmed a podcast with Lords DJ, yes. which hasn't launched yet. That's going to launch this no. month. Yeah, that will launch this month. That'll launch this month. Oh, oh, No. Change the plan, guys. Sorry to depress you on that one, but we're going to launch in January because this is going to go live first. This is going to go live first. It's a yearly yeah. roundup. It makes yeah. more sense. Um, Lord DJ, he's a fantastic guy. The business he's built, I've mm-hmm. listened to all of his music throughout lockdown. He is a cool guy. Very cool. He is a cool guy. He was very cool in person. And we went to the Savoy's event. And the Savoy's event, yeah. which we didn't really document that yeah. well no we didn't we no. didn't we generally just had a good time yeah we spoke to people we had fun mm. we networked with Shazza Gale um, <laughs> and we, there was Dee Ludlow there as well who's yes. been on our podcast and it was amazing because she got to yeah. reunite with people that yeah. so the first event I'd gone to where I threw myself in the deep end and went to Birmingham 
it was the same people from that event mm. at Savoy's and obviously new faces as well. Yeah, so it was cool. nice to kind of reunite, speak to people that hadn't seen in forever. Tej was there, like everyone was there. So that was nice to, to reunite. It was also very nice for me to put like faces to names because yeah. there was loads of people that you'd been like, oh, I've just been speaking with this person. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Like never knowing who they are. So it yeah. was really nice to see. Just all of it. All of it. All of it. Yeah. Yeah. And then December, we're just going to round it up here, guys, yeah. because obviously it's only the 5th, but I have literally, last week I didn't stop. We've signed a new client that's stocked on Sephora. They mm. are a massive client, but that was actually a company that was acquired from a liquidation um, business, so that's exciting. We've got five new leads in the pipeline. We've actually got a lead that's due to fit my media wall as well in the house, Ooh. so that's a collaboration. Um, they want to launch on Christmas Day. We've then got <laughs> another client that wants to launch a campaign on the 1st of January, um, which is actually he's got a cool cool product yeah he has a really cool product so there's a lot on it's going to be a busy december obviously it's christmas as well we want to have some downtime but there's just yeah it's going to be an exciting year for 2024 yeah. and i can't wait to see what comes of it yeah it'll and, be good so it'll be really good. what's been your favorite thing this year oh oh no you can't put me on the spot like this <laughs> my fit out of all of it yeah Sure. My favourite thing this year has been community. Yeah. You can't just agree with me. That's so cute. Yeah, you know same. Because in my head, I've got like really specifics of like, I was going to London and you stirring your drink with a knife. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> it's got nothing to do with anything. No, like, that, like my favourite thing has been travelling with you, having mm. the funnest time. My te- the team's grown I've got new people that I never expected to have on the team being able to pass work off to the team and not have to do anything is amazing because I'm just like they're experts in what they do being able yeah, just yeah it's been an amazing year and I can't wait to document 2024 and just to show what the next steps are yeah high five oh it's really sweaty sweaty high oh, no, five. it's really oh, should sweaty we high, should we do a, a back backwards. high five yeah <laughs> that was a really poor high five <laughs> There we go. Just whack everything. Please beat me up. 